So Sonnable from Austria just released their new plugin version for Smart EQ. It's now Smart EQ version 3. And we have a lot of new features and they gave me a license over the weekend um, to test out the new features. And I want to give you in this video a, a short little rundown what it's all about, how it works and how you can maybe apply it to your own tracks. So stay tuned. So this is my tune on my project called Craft. Yeah, I just released this recently on my channel. You can watch it if you actually click to my profile and um, and uh, watch it. <laughs> and I want to use this project to show you um, maybe some things in the Smart EQ. So let's listen to the tune first, uh, how it sounds without all the small EQ, uh, Smart EQs applied. So, okay, uh, maybe we start here with the drums and maybe apply here some Smart EQ to the drums. Smart EQ 3, that's what we need. And the first step is, as always, analyzing the signal. So, um, let's hit record here. And it waits for input. So, if there's no content on the track or on the channel, it doesn't analyze. So, it waits for input. So this is now the curve here for the drums and we can dial in here the strength of this um, curve with this uh, small little thing here or maybe just drag this here but I prefer to actually drag this. Um, we can also narrow down here the frequency range of the filter um, so if you just want to apply this profile to a certain range you can do that of course just dial in here maybe 60 okay. So this sounds nice, um, but at the moment I'm using here um, universal uh, universal profile, but you can dial in here maybe factory profiles, um, drums. So this looks a bit different now. So listen to that. Maybe start you with strength zero. zero. So it sounds a bit more, yeah, cleared up. It's, it's you know, removed your some of the um, muddy frequencies. Um, it's okay, I think. You can also dial in your dynamic parameter, which changes then the profile over time, because you saw it in the beginning that the analyzing part is, or the analyzing phase is not that long. So when you have a lot of uh, things changing over time, it's maybe better to dial in the dynamic parameter a bit. And this looks like this. Yeah, it's a bit better. Um, uh, but you have to be aware that this, this function draws a bit of CPU power, as you can see at the top, when it dials in, um, it does something here to the CPU load. So be aware of that. So if you have a lot of these uh, smart EQs on different channels, um, you can easily kill your CPU. <laughs> so be aware of that. Um, I think it's better now with this version. I used the, the beta version over the weekend and it was not so good, but this uh, this is here the 1.0 version. It's it's much better now. 
And I think it will be better in the future too. But you have to maybe try it out, the, the demo version or the trial version and um, try it out for yourself on your CPU. So what else can we do now? Um, we have uh, analyzed the signal. We are using here a different profile. We are using drums, which is nice. And then we have applied here um, this filter curve to our material. We dialed in your dynamic parameters, so it changes over time or adapt to the frequency content. And we can also dial in here a manual EQ by just double clicking, uh, which create bands. And yeah, you can dial in your own things here, your own taste basically. And if you like how it sounds, you can then go over here and save your own profiles like this. And you say maybe um, um, fav drums, for instance. And then it asks you if you want to apply this new profile to your um, yeah, do your drums or to your content and say yes. And then the manual EQ is removed and it's completely um, converged with the uh, or combined with the profile and your manual EQ. So it's it's one thing basically. And you have a new profile and you can use it on whatever you want. Um, so yeah, that's that. But I switch back here to um, drums. And... Let's dial in dynamic. Okay, this is fine. So now maybe switch over to bass here. So we have also bass line. It's just a big fat Reese bass with a low pass on it. So maybe um, go here for Smart EQ3 and let's see what it does to this material. Maybe switch you to profiles, bass. There it is. And analyze the signal. And there we have it. We have too much bass, as you can see here. <laughs> you want to remove nearly all the bass, but it's fine. Maybe dial in dynamic and see what it does. Okay. Um, so now maybe let's look at the join or at the grouping function here, we can join now a group here in the top left. So let's click that and maybe call it um, crafty um, hit return. And now we have these three areas here and our base in the middle area L2. And maybe we add your, our drums um, to it and we can do this from this from this instance here. So we have now the drums and the bass. Uh, drums is an L1 and bass is an L2, but I want to actually track the drums here. Because L1 and L2 have a, a meaning. It's basically the, the layer. And you can see here, uh, layer 1 lead. Smart EQ3 will try to keep tracks in this layer in the limelight. So it tries to put it up front. It's maybe something for your lead sounds, for your lead... Um, uh, uh, lead tracks or maybe vocals or something you want to have up front right and l2 here is uh, support tracks in this layer will blend well with the other tracks and may take the lead when there are no spectral clashes with tracks in layer one so um if you have maybe a vocal or pop track then you put probably the vocals up in here and uh, drums and bass and the rest in here and maybe some effects in L3 because L3 is background. Uh, everything in the background, some noises here and there, sweeps, maybe something like this. And um, L, um, Smart EQ3 knows exactly what to do with these um, instances. So maybe listen to these two tunes now together how this sounds. Uh, maybe bypass.
So the, um, the signal or these two signals sound much better together. And you can see I have here group impact knob or uh, slider or control where you can control the impact level of the cross channel processing. So it influences basically how much a smart EQ3 um, uses the information from one channel and the other channel and tries to come up with the, you know, separation of frequencies for both but what what kind of separation would be best i guess um and you can dial this in pretty easily here also bypass all so you can completely remove all two um instances at the same time and see and look how it sounds without and um this is pretty nice actually Oh yeah, you can also turn off your cross-channel um, processing. So um, when you turn this off, basically every channel uh, smart EQ EQs individually without looking to the other channels. So this is also nice. You can also analyze here. Okay, nice. So um, also on the top, you can see we have this group Grafty L1 uh, is empty, L2, we have the bass and the drums now. And maybe switch over to the music channel here. So this is without all the um, Smart EQ3 um, instances here. have your small fx channel just some noise i don't think we need to apply some smart EQ settings maybe we put the smart eq at the master here let's see how this works And I don't join the group here with the master because I think it's not really advised to put the master in the same the same group as your tracks below the master because then I think you have like you know a queuing twice um, in some cases and uh, also the maybe the drum bass or the drums group tries to. Um, tries to cut out some frequencies from the master and then on the master you have the EQ at the same time. So I don't think it's it, it makes sense to join the group here with the master EQ. So I leave the smart EQ3 here on the master separate and just use uh, the grouping function for all the tracks or the buses below the master. So um, this makes the most sense for me. So 
So I think it sounds nice uh, with all the plugin instances on the tracks itself. So I would say SmartEQ 3 does a nice job with the EQing. I think it's a nice uh, step up from version 2 with all the to having an EQ being aware of the context um, EQing stuff. So it knows what's going on in the bass. It knows what, what's going on on the FX channel. And it knows how to react and prioritize certain things over others. So I think it's a, it's a nice feature to have in, in an EQ. What I miss though is uh, something like gain compensation where um, when you apply EQ settings or dynamic settings, it, it changes the level um, and maybe um, a gain compensation, auto gain compensation would be nice. Much, much better would be some kind of um, um, auto gain where you set in maybe a reference value, maybe minus 12 luffs, and then the EQ tries to bring up the volume or EQs in that way that we have exactly this um, volume at the end. This would be nice. Also in my mastering process, I used pink noise as a reference curve a lot. And I think it would be nice to have some kind of reference analyzer inside SmartEQ to see where we are in relation to the pink noise curve or maybe the, the 4.5 dB per octave curve. Um, or maybe even have a slider where we can change the weighting of the applied EQ in relation to pink noise. This would be pretty beneficial, I think, for the smart EQ. Okay, yeah, that's it for me, I think, for this video. I want to just give you a small little show or preview of what you can do with the smart EQ, how it looks, how it works, and how it sounds. And I think you should maybe try try it out for yourself. There's actually a, a trial version on the website. The link is in the description below, of course. And you can try it out for yourself and uh, maybe give them feedback or maybe if you like it, just buy it. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave some questions in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a thumbs up if you like the video. And I see you in the next one. See you and bye.